Hi, I'm Linda K. Moses, and this is really where I live. Most people think I live in my house, but I really live in my studio space. Um, in my studio, I have a number of different stations. Um, this station is where my flex shafts are and my drill press. This station here is where I have my chasing tools, stamping tools, hammers, and small stakes, and other forming tools. The station behind me, over here, is my jeweler's bench, and this is where I really live. By the way, this bench was designed based on a design that uh, Tim McCrate did in Complete Metalsmith. And uh, it's served me well over the years. I've added things to it and uh, added extra drawers, added um, the um, PVC pipe to hold my mandrels. And um, on the top of the bench, you can see a whole bunch of tools that I need to have readily accessible when I'm working on a piece. Uh, my pliers are handy, my files are handy, and um, uh, this is primarily where I work, but it's not where I do my metal clay work. So let's go out to where to the other part of my studio where I do my metal clay work. This is my metal clay bench. Um, you can see that I have tools on either side of my bench so that they're readily accessible when I need to use them. I just reach for them and there they are. So I thought I would talk a little bit about how I uh, created the metal clay elements for the chains in the article in Metal Clay Artist Magazine. Now, those chains were made um, because I was invited to participate in a handmade chain exhibition at Blue Heron Gallery on Deer Isle. And um, I needed to be able to um, transfer a texture to my metal clay um, that was an original texture. And the way that I do that is I, I carve original printing plates um, that are made using my original designs. So the way that I do that is I drew, do the drawing for my design and then I photocopy that drawing um, using a photocopier that uses toner. And um, I then use uh, Citrusol to release the toner on, uh, uh, from the, the paper and to a silicone printing pad. Now the silicone printing pads are usually used for block printing, but um, I use them, I carve them, for using with metal clay. Now you can see I've gotten this pretty wet. I want to wait till it dries just a little bit till some of that moisture evaporates because I don't want to make a river of toner on my uh, on my printing pad. I'm going to lay it down and then I'm going to start burnishing. And where I burnish, that toner is going to be removed from the paper and deposited on the printing pad. Anywhere that I'm burnishing that's what's going to happen. And hopefully I'll be able to get all of my design done. And there we go. And there's my design. Now, the design on the printing pad does not have to be perfect. I just have to see where those lines are. The perfection comes with the carving and then applying that to metal clay. The tools that I use for carving are linoleum cutters and this is a micro woodworking tool. And I'm going to start out demonstrating th this tool. I don't like to use the dockyard tools because I don't think they work as well on this um, uh, print type of printing pad. But um, you, could, you could try it and you can experiment with it. You'll notice as I carve that I'm not moving the tool as much as moving the pad. It's a nice deep line. I can do shallow with this tool or deep. You see, watch the pad. That's where I'm. That's what I'm turning, as opposed to trying to manipulate the tool itself. So this gives me a nice shallow 
but fairly specific line. It's a it's a V gouge, and the gouge on this is also a V gouge on this linoleum cutter. This is will give me approximately the same depth of line. And I'm going to carve a bunch of lines so that you can see what this looks like and how easy it is to use. Okay, so there's the fine line carver. Then I'm going to go in and just demonstrate what you can do with a heavier carver. One that is a little bit wider and a little deeper. I like to use this this larger gauge, uh, gouge to um, carve lines that I will later uh, fill with enamel, or the lines will define in metal clay the walls around which I can fill with enamel. So, can you see the depth of those lines? Okay, so when I press this into metal clay, all of those depressions will become walls, and I can use these spaces between them which will make a depression in metal clay to fill with enamel. So once I've rolled my metal clay in this, then I needed to form, for those necklaces, I needed to form the, the dome shapes. And for the necklaces, I primarily used um, my doming plate with the, uh, using the larger narrow oval and the uh, next to the largest narrow oval to form those uh, those domed forms um, and then I allowed them to dry and that's how I created the pieces for the chains. Ooh.